Unemployed and Afraid acknowledges the traditional owners of the land we have recorded this episode on and of the land where you, the listener, are tuning in from. We would like to pay our respects to Elders past, present and extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today, acknowledging that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Unemployed and Afraid, a podcast that explores the glorious mess of building your own business with the people doing it. I'm your host and fellow business builder, Kim Curtin. Thank you for being here. Let's get into some good, honest small business chat. Hello, business builder, current or future. I'm so glad you're here with me to get inspired, motivated and supported to tackle all of the learnings we experience on this journey of building a small business. So you may be listening to this on any old day, really, but if you happen to be with me on the day it's released, it is a Thursday, the first time I've ever released one of our amazing chats on a Thursday because we now have two incredible stories for you every week. So every Monday and every Thursday, a new incredible story of brave humans building their own business, how they ended up doing it, the realities of how it's been and what they've learned all to help you feel more supported on your journey and celebrate each other in what we're achieving every day at all levels in this gig. I am so excited. A little nervous that I've overcommitted myself, but let's see how we go. Hey, get started before you're ready and all that good advice. Today, I'm joined by two amazing humans, the incredible sisters behind Reed and Hall, my sister in the sea and love and mutiny. And they are just so much fun. Honestly, I just wanted to hang out with them all day and somehow become an honorary sister. We cover so many relatable and real business feels in this episode, but to summarize some of what you can expect... We talk about having an established career already, but realizing there's a ceiling to how much you can ever really love it. That one got me right in the feels. (laughs) What happens when the universe gets involved and gives you a less than subtle push in the direction you're meant to go? Why making sure your authenticity is in whatever you put out into the world? The experience of just keeping on putting one foot in front of the other and following the path that's revealing itself, learning to own the title you've given to yourself even if it's something you've never quote unquote done in a professional sense before. And the value of balancing fake it till you make it with vulnerability and openness and how that will attract people to you. And importantly, the huge empowerment and satisfaction that comes from leaning into the finance side of your business and thinking big when it comes to money. This episode is going to give you so much inspiration to follow your gut and just do the thing and to keep on going. There's a little bit of online recording feedback that I hope you'll bear with because I just know you're going to love this chat. So let's get into it. I'm here with sisters Emma Reed and Sarah Hall, aka Reed and Hall, interior stylists, designers, and curated vintage furniture merchants. They're also the talented duo behind the beautiful destination South Australian accommodations, My Sister in the Sea and Love and Mutiny blocked to by travellers from around the world for their dream stay and booked by brands like All About Eve who want their perfect backdrop for their latest campaign. Their work has been featured in publications like The Design Files, Hunter and Folk, Country Style and loads more. It's a business that started from following their dream to simply co-own a holiday home. Emma and Sarah, I cannot wait to hear your story of how you have built this stylish little empire. Welcome to Unemployed and Afraid. Thank you for having Thank us. You. I love having a stylish <laughs> empire. That sounds amazing. It looks amazing. I tell you, you guys have done a pretty good job of that little empire. It's um, it's enviably beautiful. Thank you. To start us off, uh, I might kick off with you, Emma. I would love to know, how would you describe Sarah? <laughs> Oh my God, Sarah's amazing. If you could like write a script to have as a sister, you would write Sarah. She fills in like all of the gaps of the things that I'm terrible at or don't care about. She's the person you want to be in business with. She's totally always organized. She's on time. She has this creative vision that can hold a lot. And she always knows like the overarching theme of anything we're doing. She kind of holds the whole vision really easily. She comes up with it really easily and she can hold all of the elements of it. So I feel really, really lucky to be in this with her actually. 
Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful description. That is, that is so nice. Jeez, no, it was very nice. No pressure on you now, Sarah, at all. <laughs> She's really, really wonderful. She is. I call her my content manager. She just does all of the artistic, creative. She can tell our story in a way that I don't even dream about. You know what I mean? I'm sort of thinking about the big picture or I'm kind of in it, but I don't think about it from the outside. And she's so good at telling the story of both of us. Look, I love her. She revs me up. She's fucking crazy. And I love it. I need it. You know, when we get together on a tangent, we just go to different places because we have each other. That sounds like an absolute dream partnership. And I said it to you before we hit record, I feel like you guys have a podcast in your future, but (laughs) one thing at a time in this empire. Sarah, I want to hang out with you for a little bit longer. Tell me before Reed and Hall was a thing, who were you? I was working part-time as a solicitor. I had my kids. I was just doing my work, but you know, at home I was making nice spaces and that was where I got my creativity. It was always just at home and not at work. And I would go and I would do the thing and I would be good at it because I love writing and I would do it in that sort of professional kind of way, but I would come home and drag furniture around the house and put art different places and just that was my, the thing that lit me up. What did you love about working as a lawyer? I loved the stories of the people. I loved, yeah, meeting people that were at a particularly, I don't know, difficult point in their life and I loved being able to help in that situation. And I did a lot of public sector work and, yeah, where it was social justice, you know, important and I, I really loved it in that part of it. But there was just always a bit where I could only love it that much and then it was just wouldn't be anything else sort of past that. Does that make sense? I just, it didn't go further for me ever. It was more like a job than a passion. Yeah, yeah. A vocation. But I could see people that that was their life's work. It was never, ever my life's work. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But before we get into the other side of the the coming together of the gals, um, Emma, how about you before Reed and Hall? Who were you? I was a social worker and I had been for a long time. It's something I went into out of uni and I really believed in it. Like I really believed in social justice and it was a big part of my life. But I think I just never questioned that I could take charge of my life and that I was actually responsible for any kind of fulfillment or, you know, satisfying my desire, I guess, that I was responsible for those things. So I kind of just took the path that we take where you go to uni and you get a job and then you move up and up and up in that job and that's great. But I just wasn't at a point yet where I could even believe for myself that I could have something else that I could be fulfilled in a different way. And tell me about the story of both of you buying your shack. How did this come about? I think we were just at a point where we had little kids. We were getting closer together. I I lived in the Adelaide Hills and lived in Wollonga and we had little kids and we were just sort of at a similar point in our lives for the first time, I think, in, in a way. And we were holidaying at a place and something sparked the idea that we would go to the same house. We were like, wouldn't that be cool if it was our house? Like, that would be cool. And then we could paint the walls and we could move stuff around and then it would be really ours and we could just leave our stuff in the drawers and we could just go down there whenever we wanted. That was just like magic to us. And to own a house as adults and siblings was also kind of like a cool idea. We were like, that would be kind of hilarious if we did that. And were you both still working in your respective careers at this stage? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. What was that first holiday like when you holidayed at your home and left your stuff there? It was. It was a total dream. So exciting. Like, so exciting. Like, moving trucks with furniture from each of our houses, going down to this joint, like, beach location. It was amazing. And we had been the only ones that had seen it. It's just like huge little white weatherboard cottage in this cute little town. And our husbands hadn't seen it and the kids hadn't seen it because we had kind of made that decision. And so everyone drove there for this first holiday. It was thrilling. It was so thrilling. I love looking back at the photos of it. Like we just look so excited. <laughs> oh, I love that. So tell me about the moment that you thought, you know what, maybe, may, just maybe we could turn this into a bit of a business for us. 
It was hosting masterclass. Yeah. We did Sarah Andrews, the hosting masterclass. We saw it on Instagram. We were like, we would love to meet her. She looks so <laughs> cool. And all these people look just like our people. And why don't we just go and do this course and learn about it? But we didn't really think we would apply it to our chat. We just thought we would go and like listen to how other people did it for businesses. And we would then go and look for a different property. Yeah, we just did not sort of put two and two together at that point. It was like, that was our holiday house. And then we would do this other thing as a business. And when did that start to turn and you started to look at this this beautiful little weatherboard and think, hang on a minute, there's, there might be something here? On the drive home from Dalesford, that was where we did the course. And by the time we got home, it was like an eight-hour drive. We had the whole thing mapped out. We were ready to go. Is that when you came up with the name, My Sister in the Sea? That was later, I think. Yeah. M names all our properties. She's so good at it. And was there quite a process to take it from your home, your holiday home, into something that was consumer ready? Yes. Kim, that is a massive amount of work. <laughs> oh, it's a lot. That's a lot. It's a lot. You know, like, yeah, the toddler's oh. cots and, the you know, all this kind of paraphernalia of two families all came out. And how did you go with, you know, starting to put it out there and starting to build a bit of a profile for it? I'd love to sort of get a little bit of a sense of my sister in the sea into Reed and Hall and into the business. But I imagine that the shack sort of came first and you started building an audience there. Is that how that sort of went? I think it did, actually. Yeah, I think we started an Instagram page for My Sister in the Sea and then we started sort of just putting photos of the place up and then I think we started getting like messages from people. Yeah, we did. Like in Sydney, can I come and stay here? And we're like, what, what, really? Okay. And then we just started, it just got a life of its own. And then we got a lot of publicity really quickly. Yeah, and it just got featured places and it just really grew quite fast. How did you manage that publicity request? Now, I always find this really interesting in, in the process of, of building a business. Now, this is quite individual, of course, to a destination accommodation but I'm sure that it crosses over into other industries where you kind of create something, it looks sort of interesting, and then people start saying, can I experience this? How did you approach managing that from a paid versus a, an in-kind kind of approach? I mean, we were excited that people wanted to feature it. Like that was really thrilling for us and we felt genuinely grateful for the interest. Yeah, I mean, we do these influences, I guess, as a and with in kind stays that we, you know, offer. I don't know. It was always really interesting how people wrote up it so differently from each other. And yeah, I think I think we were like totally on board for it. And it was just always about like the relationships that we were building with those people. Like we've always had good relationships with people that have written about it, people that have stayed and people that, you know, come and photograph it for us and things like that. For sure. Yeah. It's a relationship. Yeah. You know, if we would see people that needed it or something, we would just offer it because it felt so nice to be able to share it. Yeah. We were genuinely like, this is amazing that we have this and we've made this and it feels so nice to be able to offer it. I really love to hear that. I had some guests a little while ago and they talked to me a little bit about offering everything that you have for free before attracting it into a business because that then allows you to understand more about your own business potential too and, and where it could go but also that really important aspect of nurturing relationships that become really important later on and, and you can't really see. I really do. You really do. People always remember it, like that's what's lovely. So tell me when you started, you know, building this profile for the property and you started getting a little bit of legs, how did Reed and Hall as a service, as a beautiful store, as an offering, as a partnership in that respect start to come to light? We just got a lot of feedback that the property was great and then we started the second property and it was great. But really what was driving all of that was the two of us and we couldn't get our heads around it because we're inside of it. You know, like you just think you're doing it with work. But people started to give us feedback, I guess, that it was the, there's something about the two of us together that has its own structure, I guess. And so that's when we started to, oh, like, and we, we wanted to do other things, not just run these two amazing houses. We wanted to branch out. And so that needed its own. I guess we just started to see that Reading Hall was like the nucleus and then things could come off of that. Do you think you ever would have found that nucleus without the birth of your properties without going through that process? I think so. No. I think it, uh, you don't? <laughs> God, I don't know. All <laughs> oh, right. I think so. I think we really like being around each other and we really like 
our ideas and we really like dreaming huge. I do. And I do remember like that holiday when we went to Europe, you know, Fia, but I do remember like walking around going like, how yeah. can we work together? Like, how can we do this all the time? Because this is just more fun than what we do every day yeah. otherwise. I find that really interesting endlessly because, you know, as I go along on this journey, I think you can start with one idea in mind and all of a sudden it evolves into something you just never could have imagined. And the business just kind of like happens. It's, you know, you start with one thing and then you're like, oh, yeah, shit, I'm in yeah. business over here doing this now. And, oh, oh, hang on, let me just reframe that. And as you perfectly described it, Reed and Hall becoming the nucleus, everything else that you do for eternity really can come off of that. Yeah, yeah. And you don't get there until you just start doing anything, something. Totally. And the thing that just started first was the Airbnb. Yeah, that's right. What was your most exciting moment with my sister in the sea? We were doing school drop off. I was in my car. We, our kids go to the same school. It's hilarious. They're in the same class. They're in the same class. This is even more hilarious. And I was sitting, I just got back in the car and I saw a message on my phone from the design files. And that for us at that point, it was really early on. And I got to tell Sarah and that was the funnest thing. That was the funnest thing, being able to tell her that. Yeah, I totally remember it. Yeah, I remember walking towards the car and she yelled it out and I was like, like, I can't, like, wow. Like, that for me was like a bucket list moment of like a... It was, yeah. A dream, yeah, total dream. Oh, that is so, that is so wonderful. For those people who, and not necessarily for the design files in particular, but for those people who have a dream publication, a dream feature, a dream anything, you know, somewhere you want to be, you want to be a part of, what would you say to them in terms of trying to attract that opportunity? Is there anything that you think you you did in particular that, that attracted that, any nurturing, anything you would do again if you had the opportunity? We've been in this really fortunate position that we've never had to reach out to anyone for those things. So I think you just we honestly just believe you actually have to be authentic. You actually have to be yourself. You actually have to follow the path that is the most natural for you and that's what attracts the things. Tell me a little bit about growing your audiences and in particular you have a beautiful presence on Instagram for all of your beautiful properties but also your Nucleus brand for Reed and Hall. How did you go about approaching what you put out there and how you attracted an audience in that space? I think that's M really, um, the way that she captures our daily antics of whatever we're doing. Yeah, I think she's just really good at showing that, you know, knowing when to hit record or something. I, I don't know, knowing what would be of interest to others because we would be interested in it, I guess. We're just sort of going about these and what little things we notice around our homes or whatever we're putting up. Yeah, I just think mm-hmm. if you're yourself, yeah, it comes across. Anything you try, like anytime we've tried something that wasn't completely aligned with just what we would do anyway, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't read. Like you can just see straight through it. And I so believe that. Like I so believe that when you're scrolling Instagram, you know instantly what's real and what isn't. I don't wonder if it's some sort of like mirror neuron thing. Like, you know, they say everything has energy. Like it's some sort of attraction. Absolutely. Authenticity. Yeah, absolutely. People just want to see other people being human. It's really attractive. It's really attractive. And it's that it's connection, isn't it? Like wanting to connect on some level, knowing what things attract that in you. When did love and mutiny come into the picture and how was that experience? bumpy it came in really quickly like six months I think after we'd launched my sister in the sea we just were all in we just saw this property closer to Adelaide and it was on the beach and we'd always like that was a dream as well to get a beachfront property and Emma and I went again to see it on our own <laughs> that is a dangerous combination we have that is a dangerous combination actually <laughs> we'll take it the sun, we saw it at sunset and it was just like beautiful, beautiful. We just couldn't even, not even believe where we were on earth that we're driving down there on this long dirt road. Where are we going? We'd never been there before to the area. Yeah, we were just like all in. This is the most fun we can have. Let's get another one. I love that. What's the most fun that I can have? Let me do that. That just sounds like a, a magical purpose for doing whatever it is you're doing. Tell me a little bit about the decision to leave your respective regular very adult both of them very intense (laughs) roles and jobs (laughs) tell me about making the decision to leave those jobs I got fired it wasn't a decision (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> which just still cracks me up. The universe push. We both got <laughs> shoved really quickly at the same time and we were like, this is not a coincidence. This cannot be an accident. We are the people that will hold on to like the most respectable, conservative. That was us. That like, we were raised to be like, you need a salary. You need like annual leave. You need sick leave. You need a retirement plan. Superannuation. Superannuation. <laughs> like, that's how we were raised. So we were ingrained with this story about like, this is how you are in the world. And this is what makes your life safe. And all of a sudden we became decided in some ways to become really, really unsafe. That is a very scary feeling to step off that edge, isn't it? Into okay, this is this is what I do now. I mean, you say things like superannuation. I shiver. I'm like, oh shit, I haven't done that for a while. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> we live in a totally different world now. We're completely different people. What about you, Sarah? Did you get a, a gentle push or a big giant one? I got offered a redundancy out of nowhere, which was the happiest day of my life. I was thinking about this the other day to watch other people get it too. You know, a bunch of you at the same time was so cool you know and to see these people overnight their whole demeanor there was like a freedom about, about all of us which made me so achingly sad that I didn't choose it for myself I didn't really think to choose that for myself I knew that I didn't want to stay doing what I was doing until retirement but I didn't sort of think about when that would happen or how that would happen at all and it was a few months you know between me and M. so we were just like this is it tell me about that first meeting you had so two jobless gals <laughs> into their self-employed territory. <laughs> Tell me about that one. I think it's a really good. I think it's a really good thing actually because I think you just then at that moment you commit it. You just commit like this has to work. This you, you've lost all your safety nets. Yeah, we have to earn an income. And did you yeah. make a bit of a plan? at that stage for how you might go about that or any uh, big dreams that were laid out at that stage? We always had big dreams. We didn't have a plan. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember, Sarah. I don't think we did. I just think we were like, we have to just get this house finished and ready to be rented. It was still red being renovated and it was COVID. And yeah, I guess that was the focus. And we were just, you know, like what you do, Kim, like you just put one foot in front of the other and you're like, you just keep working. You just work and you work and you work. Yeah, you just keep following the path that's in front of you. There's no point in freaking out. It's just no point. My partner always describes it to me like pulling the thread. I'm sort of one of those people that before I pull that first thread, I'm like, hang on a minute, can I just see what the potential like end of the thread looks like? And you just, you just cannot possibly, you just, you have to force yourself to to pull the thread, don't you? And just, and just see what happens. And I think we were talking about this the other day, we wrote a post about it actually, because we realized like Love Muni was featured somewhere. <laughs> we were really excited about it. The Sydney Morning Herald. Oh, that's right. I just came on one day, which is in age and SMH and stuff. And um, and we were like, you know, like if we pl- tried to plan for this and tried to like orchestrate this whole scenario where all of this would happen, it never would have happened. You just actually have to keep walking forward and allow the space to make the next thing happen. You can't orchestrate all of those details. It's just not within us. It has to happen organically by all of the work and the energy that you're putting into it. How do you feel about aligning your, let's get back to the superannuation conversation. How do you feel about managing your finances through something like that? Because I think it's something that, you know, for all of us in this self-employed gig, like it's something that sometimes plagues our minds and plagues our our limitations sometimes as well. And we get a little bit worried about how much risk can I take here? Tell me about your journey with that and, and how you manage your comfort level to keep pulling the thread. I mean, we didn't know anything, you know, we didn't know anything. I mean, just starting off like getting a joint bank account for our business, learning how to do invoices, finding, you know, this brilliant like two women like accountants that showed us how to do stuff. It was just like learning. It's just, it's not hard. It's just a bit dry sometimes, but it is just, this is what we have to learn next. Okay, let's just go and learn it. So, you know, there's huge satisfaction now in paying ourselves superannuation. There's huge satisfaction now in knowing all about our finances, how much our mortgages are, all of those things are really, really empowering. We never put off ringing them when we have to. You know, we're just always like, no, this is this is us. Let's Let's do it. Let's lean right into it, learn all about it, and we are in charge of it. And we can decide where it goes and we just, yeah, we're just not scared of it. 
I think. No. Nah. We kind of love it now. We, 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 do, we do. It's kind of fun challenge, right? Like we're like, oh, yeah. that's going to have heaps more money in it. Like that's going to grow, 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 you know? I really like to hear that because I think, yeah, that financial literacy. Have you guys read the, the book Rich Dad Poor Dad? No, but we know about it. We, we read- oh, I just started reading it. So I'm like, I just want to talk to everybody about this book. I mean, I'm like halfway through, so I could decide later on that it's shit. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm into it right now. And it's so much about mentality and, you know, making your money work for you and mm-hmm. not always looking to just, you know, earn more for your hours output, but more like, you know, invest in assets that are going to help you grow, be it, yeah. you know, a house is, is, is one option naturally, but there's many others as well. But, you know, everything. Yeah that we do as an investment but it's that mindset around like I want to know about this and I want to see it grow and I want to think of ways to see it grow and mm, yeah that's really nice to hear that on the other side you're like look if you can get past because I always feel like so awkward when I have to go talk to somebody about like structuring my finances or understanding things because I'm like shit am I supposed to have a spreadsheet already like are you how do yeah. I describe this to you like yeah. hello here's my mess please help me yeah 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 <laughs> That's funny because so many people have tried to make us do spreadsheets, like so many people. We are not spreadsheet people. It never works. It never gels. And we are completely okay with that. We do it in the way that works for us and everybody has to find that for themselves and don't allow yourself to feel any shame about that. You don't work for a company. You work for yourself. This is the benefit of it is that the joy is that you actually get to find your own path through that. And, yeah, we've always thought big about money. Like we've always had big plans about it and yeah you're right like investing in ways that makes it grow we were never ever about like we'll just make this small amount of income to you know live week to week we just that was never our intention what challenges you about running those multiple income streams and projects as well you know might I add I mean I guess we're we're talking about two incredible properties and one business at the centre of that that has you know, styling opportunities and the sale of beautiful pieces. You know, what challenges you about managing all of those little ducks in a row? No, it just kind of organically happens now, doesn't it? We work on what we want to work on that day. We're like, what do we feel like doing? This is the bit. Let's just crack on with this bit. You know, and then we sort of just put ourselves all into one thing and then the next thing naturally flows out of that. Yeah, we both have kind of like creative minds where we actually do flip between different projects really easily it's actually easier for us to work on multiple things and I think that's like this misconception that it's hard for a business to do that but for a lot of people I think it's it's easier to have lots of things on the go all at once like if we're working on only one project I get so bored so fast Sarah sees it she just needs to me tune out I can't do it we watch where each other's energy gets excited I think and where each other's feels flat so I don't know. There's just always a way that we work that just feels so, it clicks in somehow, you know, with with the other. Yeah. And where we need to grow, you know, I've had to learn how to do things that before I found boring, so I didn't want to do them. But like Sarah's really good at being like, we need to do this really boring thing. And it's fine. Like, it's fine. You just give yourself a reward at the end of it. Like, you just have to do it. But it's so much better. Like, even the hardest days, even the things you don't want to do, are like 100 times better than the jobs that we used to have. You know what I mean? So it's actually all good. Driving around, doing something boring, lugging furniture or whatever. You know, we're like, at least we're not sitting at our desk writing reports right now. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> like, it's just, we always say that. <laughs> it's fine. This is great. <laughs> and we laugh about how we used to have to fill in time sheets. It cracks us up now that we ever lived like that. We're just not and those like, people. Ask people for holidays. Oh, my God. Stuff. Like, even though we were saying, we just can't even imagine doing that now. Feels ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Gosh, isn't that just the truth? Yeah, it's just the, the absolute dream is just being able to, to dictate your own time and your own energy. That's what it is. Do you think that being a team, so being two sisters in it and being able to, to help each other in that space, do you, how do you feel like that lifts you up to keep you positive and keep you focused on that mindset? And totally. We could, I, I, I would not want this on Me my neither. Own. I wouldn't know how to do it on Me my neither. own. I, I, just wouldn't, I wouldn't even have gone the Me neither. without the gate on my own. Nah. <laughs> That first invoice would never have been sent if it was up to me. <laughs> yeah, I would not even be on Instagram, like, if it wasn't for Emma. Seriously, she was like, we should go on Instagram. And I was like, I'm so private. 
And now I'm like, we have to get on TikTok. It must happen. And now, <laughs> now I can see like it's for community. Like now we're like, okay, let's just roll with it. Like it's, it's fun. Yeah. That's really interesting to hear, Sarah, that, you know, that, that element of, of private life versus public life. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about, <laughs> about that feeling and, and getting past that? <laughs> <laughs> I got past it pretty quickly. I don't know. As soon as I could see like, that I could have conversations about other people's houses <laughs> with them and design and all of that stuff that I love, that sort of quickly, you know, vanished. But yes, I was like, you know, really private and I had that legal mentality about everything. Even when we have to communicate now and I write an email, Em has to like take out the <laughs> like straightness. I've just been trained into like, here are the points, boom, boom, boom. The end. No, like there's just no. That is just how it is. <laughs> like that. Like it's just not. You know. So I, I love that I'm just learning this whole actual other way to communicate. Yeah. I mean, like oh, I recognised in Bunnings the other day, which is cracks me up when I was thinking about hating Instagram. It just is so funny to me now that I was so um like this is my house everyone would know my address I don't know I don't even think about it to be honest Kim I mean maybe I probably should I don't know so I find it just as difficult to tend to try to hide a little bit behind brands or you know not necessarily want to put your own voice out there you know have an opinion on things it all takes a little bit of time and it's nice to hear that that's been your journey as well I think a lot of people in particularly those you know listening who might be like, oh, I have this, you know, this business already happening or this idea, but it requires me to put myself out there in a visual sense or with my voice or, you know, with my photos. And and I don't know how to do it, but it's like, well, you just got to try and stuff it up a few times, right? Like I've definitely done some awkward videos. <laughs> and totally. I do remember being feeling so uncomfortable about it, actually. It doesn't occur to me now, but I do remember that awkward beginning. And so where do you think you might like to see your business grow to? Is there something in your mind that you think could be a possible next step for you guys? I don't know. I think we're just really open and we just go where we feel like we want to spend time and hang out in our minds, you know? It's always quite obvious what the next step is at the time. It's not like a pre-thought out thing. It's just like, what do we want to do? Or we'll get like three emails about one thing in a week. Okay, let's go into this, you know? So we're starting to do a lot of interior design and other people's houses. That's what's happening at the moment. But, you know, we don't we don't know. That's the nice thing about working for yourself. <laughs> you just get to go with what you're interested in at that time. Okay, I find that really interesting because I think intuition plays a huge part in our businesses and what we're developing and what we're doing. And I think sometimes the rational parts of our minds, I mean, it's wonderful that you have each other because sometimes you can like beat the rational out of each other and just be like, hang on a minute, this feels right. And, you know, this stuff is is coming through. So I think it's a, it's a great point to touch on the role of intuition in how you guys work. But tell me a little bit about getting an email three times in a couple of weeks. You know, someone might be planting little seeds and, and asking you, you know, could, is this is this something? If it's a new task and a new something that you're that you're adding in that feels right, how do you approach it as a, a first time out going in and go, okay, this is going to be the first time I'm going to, for example, interior design somebody else's home. Where do I start? It's scary. Like the first time you have to do anything, but that's you just have to kind of suck it up. Like it's part of it. You have to feel afraid and you have to feel self-doubt. I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you want to move forward and progress in any way in your business, you're going to have to feel uncomfortable and that's just a part of it and you can't avoid that. You can't coddle yourself too much. Like you actually have to make choices and then step into those choices and you will feel afraid and you will feel self-doubt and that's just a part of it. Goodness, this is just so true. And something happens, you just grind in and and go forward. Once you feel all of that, <laughs> you just you just go on. Keep moving. Keep moving. You just go through it. It's quite the balance, isn't it, that we strike between fake it till we make it and show up authentically. And the two might sound like opposing thoughts, but I would argue that the two are very much the same because you kind of have to show up 
to others like you're ready for it, even though you're, you're feeling the fear. So that's the kind of like fake it till you make it. But then it's also okay to show up in that instance and be like, yeah, hey, so I'm just going to try this thing. I don't know if this is exactly what you're expecting, but, you know, what do you think about this? It's like it's finding a way to mm-hmm. like fake it whilst you're being your authentic self in, in the same time. And I think like sometimes people... I mean, I know I do. Sometimes I find myself in that weird middle, like paralyzing bit, which is like, oh, I don't, I don't want to like pretend I'm super confident with this because yeah. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but also there's an element where you have to just show up and try. Get on with it. Get on with it. Yeah, you just have to get on with it. And there is a part of you that does know how to do it. Like there is. Mm. You just tap into that part. Mm-hmm. How much do you rely on Dr. Google um, to help you with things? Because I feel like Google and YouTube are just my best friends for, <laughs> for confidence building in certain places. For all of the financial stuff, like the structure of the business, we've had to, we're always looking at things like how do people do this? How is this done? It's awesome because we live in an age where you can just do that. And also we ask people, like we've built an amazing, you know, community. So you can just ask people and they'll tell you. <laughs> It, it does, yeah, that's that's actually all it is. And I've got an email sitting in my drafts right now asking somebody about something that I'm scared to do, being like, hey, where do I start with this thing? And I've been like hovering over the cursor all day, like, eh, eh, do I do I click it? <laughs> so you've just yeah. given me that confidence. You need mentors. Like we have amazing mentors who believe in us. And it's it's those people that have believed in us from the beginning that we go back to over and over and over again and my god that's so lucky the sarah that was working in that very serious role you know both focused in that social justice space and you know that let's pay superannuation let's pay tax let's you know let's do these things to those two women what would you say to them now thank you for being brave yeah keep going (laughs) yeah yeah i mean I, I I could weep at the idea that I could never have done this. Like the idea that I would have stayed in that job it just actually makes me like heartbroken for myself that I never, ever, ever would have had mm. this experience. And mm. we've had some amazing experiences mm-hmm. and taking control of your own life is the greatest mm-hmm. gift that you can give yourself. So I'm so grateful to her. Yeah, to get to see yourself in a whole different way, you know, business owner and designer and all of that is just like the greatest feeling of pride. And if, if I hadn't left, I wouldn't have ever got to see that I could have done that for myself. Uh, I think I might know the answer to this question because we, we may have covered some of this element, but was there ever anything that held you back about calling yourselves, you know, and now I'm stepping into the role as a designer, I'm stepping into the role as a business owner, I'm stepping into this role. Was there, how was that experience for you? At the beginning, uncomfortable a little bit but then I think about you know how we've always done the thing that we love doing now and really I just think if you know yes it, there's always that part of you that is that so I don't have any hesitation now because I know and I trust myself and I trust them and we know that we can add value so now it, it's natural but I guess yes it took some getting used to yeah, it's like a whole paradigm shift from who you are. You have to like create like a whole new person in a way, but you only do that by actually doing it. And you can't really wait for anybody else to kind of believe in you enough to say, to give you those titles that you actually have to create them for yourself. And if you're waiting for everyone else to like believe it, it just won't happen. It's an internal process that happens. Could not agree with you more. I think it's such an important message for us all to remind ourselves of consistently that no matter where we are and where we want to pivot to, what we want to be, it's we have the opportunity to give that to ourselves and to give ourselves that opportunity to have the kind of life that we want to have. That you deserve to have. I mean, everybody deserves to have a life that they wake up and they're excited to live that life. I absolutely agree. And, you know, we all deserve to pay ourselves some superannuation. So, like, let's just... (laughs) (laughs) Thousand would 100% agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to tag them in the, in the episode and um, give them a little pump up for reminding us all about the importance of that. As we get to the end of our, our episode, I always ask this question to my generous guests, both of which you have been in this episode by sharing your journey and, and sharing your approach to business and by backing yourselves in the first place to go for this, to, to be able to tell the story. It is just, you know, it's so impressive and it's exciting and it's inspiring, um, terrifying, all of those things at once. Uh, but I am so grateful for you sharing your story on here to help you 
grow and to keep you continuing to grow, how can the listener and I support you? Kim, what a great question. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> Just keep showing up and allowing us to be authentic. <laughs> yes, right? Yeah, I think so. We feel really supported by our community. We do. Yeah. I think that that's the nicest thing, the back and forth. You should see our DMs. There's a party in our DMs all of the time. It's amazing in there. It's amazing. <laughs> the, the stories. Oh, I yeah, wish I could yeah. just publish them sometimes because I'm like, this is where everything is happening. It's like the back room. Of, you know what I mean? It's like so good back there. People are so incredibly generous to us. Like, it's flying our minds constantly, the support that we're getting. It's so brilliant. And, you know, I think that could be a message for anybody listening as well is that if you can support another business owner in some way, go and do it because that will come back to you tenfold and, you know, you can support each other. Yeah, give them a shout out. Pump each other yep. up. And especially those ones that are not like aligned to you. Now, I didn't realize this until I had a business myself, but when I've seen friends of mine or colleagues or family go and do things that like, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. What are they doing? And it might be something that I'm super not interested in, you know, like, oh, like I'm not super interested in the fact that you've just started a construction company or for example, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I shouldn't a, offer and be like, what can I do? Let me just share it with my, you know, audience. Even if your audience, quote unquote, is like 400 people. Totally. Share a bloody post and tag and be like, this person I know has just started a construction company. Maybe it could be something that you're interested in. End of story. Yeah. Like just go and do that and get around people and whatever anybody else is doing. Just like, just support each other. Because you're like so right. It's so nice to hear that you've got that fun community going in the DMs because we all need that to keep going. We all need that motivation and community networking, word of mouth. That's how all these businesses are built. And we're just nothing without that. Yeah. Because so many people that when we first started, you know, people like Sarah Andrews and Julie Gibbs and all those people just gave us so much support and they didn't have to. They didn't have to do any of the things that they did for us. We'll never forget that. It helped us believe in ourselves and that's like the most priceless thing you can have, I guess, is people that see a vision for you that you can't yet quite see for yourself and they hold it for you and you can step into that because they get it. They can see ahead. Well, aside from from that, from from getting around, I'm going to make sure that we've got the links in the show notes to Love and Mutiny, My Sister in the Sea, and your website, Read and Hall, so that the listener, if they're not already, can go hit follow, slide on into your DMs, find out when your TikTok is released so we can see you doing all sorts of fun, crazy things on there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over it, Kim. I'm gonna. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Oh, she's gonna. She's gonna be all over it. You know, it, it's gonna be. Hilarious. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait. And of course, here we go and and take the opportunity to stay in your beautiful accommodations as well. I mean, I'm an Adelaide gal. South Australia is where it is at. So go your peninsula. Come down. Kim, <laughs> come down. It will be down now. It, yeah, uh, it used to be up. Now yeah. it's down. It will be. It's true. It's so, true. Yeah, it's South Australia. True is just the most beautiful place so yeah we absolutely need to go get around you and support you emma sarah thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend it with me to share with me just a little bit about your story and share with the listener as well um for encouragement for inspo for all of the things while we're on this path just thank you so much for spending time with me mm, thanks kim thanks so much for thanks, having us kim. one quick thing if you're hearing this you've listened all the way through Hopefully that means you really like this podcast because it's pretty generous to give up 40 odd minutes of your time for it. If that is the case, please leave the show a star rating and a review. It helps me reach so many more people who might also listen all the way through and get some benefit and some support out of it. Not to mention it puts a real spring in my step to read them. Thank you for listening to Unemployed and Afraid, the podcast for small business builders with your host, me, Kim Curtin. If you love it, you can say thanks with a star rating and a review. And of course, join the community on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Find us at Unemployed and Afraid wherever you're hanging out and I'll see you there.